Hello and welcome to Snow Country Stories Japan. My name is Peter, the host of the podcast and a freelance writer and guide based in Nagano, Japan. I hope everyone is doing well. It's a lovely time of year here in the snow country. The days are warm and the nights are nice and cool. The snow has now gone from the lower areas of Nagano, where I'm based, but there's still a good amount of snow visible on the mountains above. And with that, two of the region's best alpine destinations have now opened. Inaccessible through winter due to the amount of snow they are subject to, the Tatsuyama Kurobe Alpine Route and the Alpine Valley of Kamikochi both opened to the public in the middle of this month and will remain open until the mid to late November, before closing again for the winter to come. I won't go into discussion now about Tatsuyama Kurobe as it comes up in today's interview. But it's worth saying that both it and Kamakochi are located in the Hida Mountains, or that is the North Alps, Japan's highest mountain range, and are part of Chubu Sangaku National Park. Kamikochi is an alpine valley located around 1500 meters above sea level that follows the beautiful Azusa River, with the mountains rising above to over 3000 meters, including Japan's third tallest mountain, Hotaka. As a guide, I can say from personal experience of having taken guests to both locations on many occasions, these rank among the best outdoor destinations in Japan. Kamikochi offers visitors a series of easy hiking trails along the river valley and more intense overnight or multi day hikes to the mountain summits, including advanced mountaineering courses. Kamikochi also offers some of the best accommodation in the region. With the hot spring towns of Hirayu Onsen and Shirahone Onsen nearby, it's one of my favorite destinations in the snow country. I'm sure I'll do episodes on both Kamikochi and Tatyama Kurobe in future, but for the time being, I just wanted to mention them as they're now open to the public, and I recommend that if you're headed to Japan, you check them out. Before jumping into today's episode, I also wanted to follow up on the announcement I made earlier in the week. In repeating that the podcast name has changed from Snow Country for Old Men to Snow Country Stories Japan, while the website has also changed to www.snowcountrystories.com. And you can find us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook by searching Snow Country Stories Japan. The reasons for the change are simple and won't result in any alteration to the podcast content. While I'm very fond of the old name, I want to make things a little clearer for listeners and help them discover the podcast as easily as possible. As you know, this is a podcast about life in Japan's snow country, as told by the people who live here. It's a podcast of diverse stories and voices, and for those reasons, I feel that the simply named Snow Country Stories Japan is the best fit for what the podcast already is and the direction I see it headed in future. Now, on with today's episode. In this episode of the podcast, I speak with Hayashi Motohiro, otherwise known as Moto the Mountain Guide. Moto is a true man of the mountains, an experienced guide who makes his living working ski patrol in Hakuba in winter before guiding on Japan's highest mountains in summer, including Mount Fuji, that is Japan's tallest mountain, and the North Alps, that is Japan's highest mountain range. I've known Moto for a few years now, our work as guides overlap somewhat. Uh, but where I take my guests into the forests and easy to reach alpine areas for leisurely walks, Moto is the man you speak with when you want to tackle the highest mountains and more serious mountaineering. Japan is, in every sense, a country of mountains. Over 70% of the Japanese landmass is designated as mountainous or rugged. Japan has 21 mountains over 3,000 meters. That's over 9,800 odd feet and above. They are all located on the main island of Honshu, with 14 of the 21 located in Nagano, and with many mountains straddling prefectures including Gifu, Toyama, Shizuoka, and Yamanashi. Fuji is the tallest mountain at 3,776 meters, with Mount Kita, 3,193, Mount Hotaka, or also known as、uh, Oku Hotaka, 3,190. Mount Aino, also 3,190, and Mount Yari, 3,180, rounding out the five tallest mountains. There are also many more mountains of over 2,000 or 2,500 meters, and Japan also boasts more than 100 active volcanoes, 
around 10% of the world's known total. Mountains are found across the islands of Japan, but three mountain ranges make up what is commonly referred to as the Japanese Alps. Those are the Hida Samyaku, or Hida Mountain Range, most commonly referred to as the North Alps, the Kiso Samyaku, Kiso Range, referred to as the Central Alps, and the Akaishi Samyaku, that is the Akaishi Range, more commonly referred to as the Southern Alps. The ranges are located in the literal heart of Japan's main island of Honshu, located to the west to northwest of Tokyo, and east to northeast of Kyoto and Osaka. There's actually an easy way to see where they are located. If you simply search for a map of Japan's Shinkansen or bullet train lines, you'll notice that in the center of the map, in the middle of Japan, there are lines running along the southern and northern coast with no lines going through the middle of the country. That's because these three mountain ranges are there and in the way. And although there's a new Shinkansen line, the Chuo Shinkansen, being put through the more southern areas of that region, it still will skirt around these mountains. I believe it's this simple fact that most international visitors use the Shinkansen to move around Japan, and given there are no lines running through the mountainous heartland of the country, most visitors go around the mountains and don't even realize they're there. Or if they do come here, they come in in winter for the fantastic skiing and snowboarding on offer. But the mountains are just as big in summer as they are in winter, and arguably as the snow recedes, there's even more to do here. My chat with Moto starts with us talking about the winter just gone, working ski patrol at Hakuba Iwatake, the short stint he's about to do working at a mountain cabin on the Tatiyama Kurobe Alpine route, the upcoming season he'll have guiding on Fuji, and his independent guiding in mountains including the North Alps. It's important to note that while the North Alps are very much part of the snow country, Fuji is not. Fuji sits alone to our south, uh, to the east of Tokyo, and is not part of any larger mountain range. Fuji is of course Japan's most famous mountain, its tallest mountain, and an active volcano. The geographer Peter Howard cites Fuji as an example of what he defines as a national golden place, a site or area of a country representative of the country as a whole, a physical space inextricable from the cultural fabric of Japan. In theory, all countries have their own national golden places that vary in character, but in the case of Japan, it is argued it is a mountain that occupies that space. Mountains in general play a hugely important role in Japanese culture and its native religion of Shintoism in which nature worship is front and center. Mountains have long been considered the domain of the gods and not places to stray into without reason. Realms that only aesthetics, those seeking refuge or hiding, or those earning their living from the forests and alpine areas would frequent. It wasn't until the arrival of Europeans that the idea of mountains as places of recreation was introduced to Japan. And today, many Japanese continue to practice Shugendo, a mix of Shintoism, Buddhism or folklore, or more loose beliefs in nature worship. On that note, Fuji is also considered one of Japan's three most sacred mountains, along with Mount Tate, the summit of the Tatsuyama Kurobe Alpine route, a topic that Moto and I discuss, and Mount Haku, which is the focal point of a national park known as Hakusan. Moto and I delve a little into the spiritual aspects of his experience in the mountains towards the end of the interview. Make sure to check out the show notes for today's episode to links to Moto's website and other relevant pages. Should you wish to contact Moto to guide in areas such as the North Alps, you can do so through his personal website www.mmguide.net or if you're interested in him guiding you on Fuji, You can get in contact via the company he works for there, www.fujimountainguides.com. As Moto notes himself during the interview, there's also another Moto Mountain Guide online using that.com. So make sure that you contact the right Moto. The Moto I'm speaking with today is Moto Hayayashi, available through mmguide.net. I hope you enjoy. How high is that mountain? Uh, 2,200-ish. Mm. Yeah. Just up up and down in one day? Up and 
Yeah, just、uh, three hours. Maybe for a normal person, it takes、uh, double or five hours to six hours. Oh, really? Yeah, but it's, it's only small snow patches、um, near the top.、Mm-hmm. So I don't, use,、uh, I don't use any like,、mm-hmm. ice, axe, ice axe or crampons. What, what were the conditions like yesterday? It's pretty dry. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, no. Is that risky going up by yourself? Nah. No, I don't think so. You,、uh, you say it with confidence. <laughs> <laughs>、yeah. Any more climbing、uh, planned for the next week or so? I guess you're busy because you're about to go to Tatayama. Yeah. So, so tomorrow I'm going up to Tateshina, but、mm-hmm. up to the seventh station, we can access by car. We、right. have access yeah, by car. So, from seventh station to the top, we carry. So, how high is the seventh station?、Uh, I don't know. How high is the top? The top, <laughs> the top is. Around 2,400. Okay. And how many hours of hiking is that, you think?、Uh, about, about one hour ish. So I'm talking today. My guest today is Hayashi Motohiro, a guide here in Nagano. Very,、uh, very much looking forward to my chat today because one of the things in beginning this podcast I wanted to do was have a clear focus on mountains.、Uh, Nagano and the area that we're in today. and... The area that we generally call the snow country is home to most of Japan's tallest mountains. And Moto is a very serious mountain guide. So I'm looking forward to our chat today. So, Moto, first question How are you doing today? How are you? Good, good. How are you? Pretty good, pretty good. As we, was, as we were talking about, the weather has warmed up really fast. Yeah, it's pretty hot today. Yeah. 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 Thanks for having me, by the way. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. <laughs> yeah. It's my pleasure. So, what I was saying that、uh, obviously you are a, can I describe you as a full time mountain guide? Is that the best way to describe what you do?、Um, sort of.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because I'm guiding、uh, in summertime on Mount Fuji.、Mm-hmm. And I'm just starting my business like,、um, in between the season, like in spring and autumn.、Yep. I want to start my own guiding business. It's、yep. a small business. Yep. Yeah. So, you're saying you'll be heading to Fuji this summer? Yep. When does the climbing season in Fuji begin?、Um, so, for like, ordinary people, like,、uh, the, <laughs> the course、uh, publicly opens mid July, but our tour starts from the end of June. So, we start from the end of June to mid October. Okay. Yeah. So, obviously, we're still a little. When, when is Japan's climbing season? When does that officially open?、Uh, most of the mountain, like high mountain, like Fuji and Northern Alps, Southern、mm. Alps, starts from、uh, the beginning of July、okay. because、um, still snow on the mountain、yeah. until that time.、Yep. So, yeah. So, as a mountain man yourself, obviously, how do you entertain yourself through this time of the year when the trails aren't open yet?、Uh, <laughs> so. This is actually this morning too. I was looking for wild vegetables. Do you、oh, know? Yeah, like sunset. Yeah, yeah <laughs> edible <laughs> plants.、Yeah. So that's yeah, one of my interests during this season. Perfect season for it, right? Yeah, yeah. So, sunset, for any listener who's not familiar with that word, refers to mountain vegetables, wild vegetables. Wild vegetables?、Maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah wild.、Yeah. They grow you know, through the mountains here, through the forests and mountains of not just this region, but most parts of Japan. Right. And certainly, it's a traditional pastime to go out there and pick them, to cook them,、uh, and to, to yeah, eat yeah. them at home. And I can be quite honest in saying this there's some really delicious. Have you tried that? Yeah, yeah, I love it actually. Nice. One of my favorite things when we visit Niigata,、uh-huh. um, my wife's family in Niigata, there's a fantastic、um, a Sansai soba. Oh, good. Sounds good. Near Hakai. Do you know about Mount Hakai? Hakai, yeah. I've, yeah. Been, I've been there. Oh, yeah. It's a great place. Yeah, great. And it's one of the best restaurants that I know in Japan.、Uh-huh. Really local. Uh, I, I don't even know what half the things that I'm eating are,、right. but they're all delicious. And I, I think they're just picking them from the mountain around them. Okay. Really fantastic stuff. All right. Let me know about that rest. Yeah. yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> I'll give you the. the <laughs> I, actually, I actually proposed it to my. So I'm married, of course, but my wife and I haven't done a wedding. Uh huh. And my mother in law would like us to. Right. And so I proposed that we do the wedding at Hakai Jinja. Oh, nice. Hakai Shrine. Yeah. And then do the reception at this little local Sansai Soba place. Wow, that should be super cool. Yeah, it'd be yeah, really cool. Yeah.、Right? But I don't know if my,、uh, my wife's family think it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, obviously, we're going to be talking about mountains today. 
And uh, Moto, can you just help, for listeners who aren't really familiar with Japan, um, obviously Japan is actually a very, very mountainous country. Right. Something yeah. a lot of foreigners maybe don't necessarily know. Mm-hmm. And the mountains are spread across Japan, but there are three major mountain ranges which are referred to as, in English, the Southern, Central, and Northern Alps. Alps is, that, yeah. is that correct? Yep. Can you just give me a little bit of information about those mountain ranges? Exactly where are they and what are the major peaks that make up those mountain ranges? Okay, okay. Mm. So, you know, the Nagano prefecture is very big. Like, I mean, in terms of land size. So, mm. from north to south. And then the Northern Alps is located at the western side of Nagano prefecture. Mm-hmm. Is that correct? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I had to think myself there. For <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then down to south of it, uh, there's a, a central Alps. Mm-hmm. But that central Alps is uh, totally in the Nagano prefecture. The northern Alps that I mentioned is a kind of border uh, of Toyama, Gifu, and Nagano prefecture. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then the last one, Southern Alps, is also the border of Nagano Prefecture, Yamanashi, and Shizuoka Prefecture. And what are the names of those ranges in Japanese, the names of those mountain ranges? Uh, you mean uh, Hida Mountain? So Hida is the... Hi, yeah, Hida is the Northern yep. Alps. Uh, the Central is Kiso, because the uh, Central Alps is located be- between Kiso Valley and Ina Valley. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then Southern Alps, I believe... Akaishi, yeah, mountain, <laughs> Akaishi mountain range. And the th- of those three mountain ranges, which is the highest? Um, the Northern Alps has got uh, highest. Northern Alps. Yeah. yeah. So Japan's tallest mountain is Fuji. I right. think most listeners would be aware of that. Yeah. But Fuji is not la- located in any of those mountain no, ranges. No. So where is Fuji? It's uh, um, it's more eastern side of uh, from like Alps area. So it's closer to Tokyo. Closer to, to, to the south of where we are. Yeah, now. yeah. It's and more on the seaside and it's it's between in Yamanashi and Shizuoka Prefecture. Outside of the snow country. Outside. Yeah, different region. Different. Yeah. And in the mountains that you are just describing, uh, I think that in terms of your winter work, yeah. my understanding is that you work in one of the ski resorts over in Hakuba, which again is to our west part of the North Alps. Is that correct? Yeah, 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 correct, yeah. Can you tell me about your winter work? What do you do through the winter? Um, I, I'm i working for ski patrol in Iwatake Snow Resort. Uh, it's one of the snow resorts in Hakuba. Our work is for like uh, safety management in the ski field. So every morning, like uh, we do check the each course and if, if there's any dangerous spots or... <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, if we find uh, stones coming out or anything dangerous, we put hazards, right. something like that. And then during the day, if there's any accident, we go rescuing them. And then at the <laughs> end of the day, we sweep the customers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How many it. how many seasons have you been doing that that work? I I've been working for eight season in total oh really i guess yeah and how would you describe iwatake as a as a resort because it's part of hakuba valley hakuba valley has 10 resorts if i'm thinking yeah 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 so iwatake itself the mountain is pretty small comparing to hapo or tsugaike now it's more friendly to like non-skiers non-snowboarders customers as well yeah and then for skiers snowboarders um I think it's better for snowboarders because that mountain has interesting topography. Mm. Yeah, It's quite a low resort. Yeah, quite low. So its snowfall isn't as reliable as the other resort, some of the other resorts in Hakuba, is that correct? Yeah, correct, because uh, we're closing at the end of March. Yep. But the other s- ski roads like Hapo, Goryu, Tsugaike, yep. still open. Yeah, up to golden week. I mean, yep. the beginning of May. Yeah, so it's quite a, yeah, I agree with you. I think it's actually quite a good resort for snowboarders. Yeah. Especially it's a good resort if you're a beginner or maybe intermediate. Nice um, long runs, quite wide. Good place to learn. Right? Yeah, good place to learn. Yeah. 
and very beautiful. Like on a clear day, the 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 sea, the um, views from yeah, Itake. I think the view is the best from the top. Yeah, uh, there's a mount. <laughs> Mountain cafe. I don't know. There's a cafe on the top of the mountain. Oh, the very famous、um, mountain harbor. Yeah, yeah. that's correct. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If it's sunny, it's so gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. It's popular with couples, I think, to go up there. And- yeah, to the couple families, even in、uh, green season, a lot of people、yeah. going up there and、yeah. see the view. Have a cup of tea and coffee, <laughs> <laughs> relax. Yeah, it's really becoming an all, all year round. Yeah, true. Resort, right? Because they really develop their mountain bike trails. Right,、yeah. right. Yeah, I was. I went there in midsummer last year. I was really impressed, actually, how busy it was. Ah,、uh, yeah. I thought we'd just go up there and get on the gondola. Nobody would be there. Okay. But it was busier than it was in winter, actually. And so, obviously, Ibataka and, and all the ski resorts are now of Hakuba are now closed, and it's you're still a few months away from starting your work at. Fuji. Fuji, yeah. So,、right. how are you entertaining yourself? What, what are you going to be doing in the next few months? My routine、uh, this、uh, few years is after Ibataka, I I just have a time to relax myself,、mm-hmm. and then at the end of April,、mm-hmm. I, I go up the place called Tateyama. Yeah. Now I'm very interested to talk about this because、uh, what they refer to as the Tateyama. Uh, Kurobe Alpine Route、mm. is one of the most popular destinations、uh, in this part of Japan. Uh-huh. Uh, it's part of the Hida Mountains, the North Alps, right? And it is a,、uh, a series of transports that takes you from the Nagano side of the mountains f- f- via Ogizawa Station、uh-huh. up to the top station of Murado,、yep. which is at two thousand four hundred and fifty meters. Yeah, right, right.、Yep. Uh, which is about five hundred meters below the summit of Tateyama, which、uh-huh. is just over three thousand. And you can continue on、uh, over to the、uh, Toyama side of the mountain down to Tateyama Station. Right. right.、Uh, so it's a really popular, it's a hugely popular、uh-huh. destination, getting better known now for international visitors. Yeah. And it just opened. If if I'm not mistaken, it opened. Yeah, they opened a couple of days ago. Yeah, right. So you're you're about to head there for work. What work will you be doing?、Um, yeah, I'm working for、uh, Mountain Hut, one of the Mountain Hut,、mm-hmm. serving. <laughs> Breakfast and dinner, cleaning the、mm. rooms, and then, yeah, if we have、uh, enough time to get out, we we just go backcountry skiing in the oh very yeah,、nice. r- yeah resting time. What's the backcountry like up there? So it's very popular, yeah, because、uh, many mountain skiing guys taking the guests up to Tateyama.、Mm. The good thing is there is a base. I mean, there's there's many mountain hut. That you can stay after、mm. the skiing. Do you know、um, how much snow is up there at the moment? In terms of snow wall, yeah, it's about. I don't know. This year, I heard that this year is a list. Oh, really? Less than yeah, eleven meters or something like that. Is okay. So what you're referring to there is what Tachiyama is arguably mo- best known for, is the, these huge, huge corridor of snow walls. So the road is carved through the snow. I guess sometime in March, someone goes up there、yeah. to carve it out. Yeah, right. And they can go up to about eighteen meters in height.、Uh-huh. These huge snow yeah. walls. Yeah. And this is the really this is the most popular site. People go up there just to to see them. Yeah. And they're very easy to access. Once you get to the top station at Murado, you can walk to the snow walls in a couple of minutes.、Uh-huh. Um, but you're saying this year they're 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 much smaller than usual. Yeah, much smaller. I've heard. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's a bit of a concern. <laughs> and so, in terms of the mountain hut that you're going to be working at,、yeah. you said who's it servicing? Because the obviously the hiking is not open yet because of all the snow. Yeah. So it's servicing people who are going up there to do backcountry skiing and snowboarding. Is that it? Or yeah, but、um, like ordinary tourists, like including international traveler, they come and stay because.、Uh, We've got onsen inside of the mountain hut,、That's, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even if you're not gonna hike or do some activity over there,、mm. it's pretty nice view over there. How far is the hut from Murado Station? So by walking about half an hour. That depends on the snow conditions and weather conditions. Okay, so it's pretty easy to access. Yeah. So yeah. anyone who's kind of reasonably fit can, 
yeah. you can get there. Yeah, <laughs> even if you're not fit, <laughs> I think. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If you need a hand, just call us, and then <laughs> yeah, one of us come and pick it up. Yeah, it really is a beautiful destination. I recommend to anyone who gets the chance to go up there to, yeah. to do so. How long will you be working up there this season? Uh, just uh, 10, 10 days, I guess. Okay, so a short little yeah. stint. Yeah, only for visit time. Have you spent much time up there during the summer when when the all the trails are open? I worked before in autumn season, like forage season, but I've never the summer. summer. But have you hiked up there yourself? Yep, yep. I did. Yep. And can you recommend any trails? So once you go up in the Murodo, 2,400 meters high, mm. and the top one, Tateyama, mm-hmm. mountain is 3,003. 2003. It's an easy number to remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So in terms of distance, it's not too long. Mm. If you are reasonably fit, mm. there's no technical trail. Mm. You can walk up to that peak. And from there, from the peak of Tatsuyama, uh-huh. you can continue walking to the other major peaks in the right. North Alps. Is that correct? Yeah, correct. It's yeah. And which other mountains would you consider to be like the major peaks of the North Alps? I mean, around the Tateyama area, the Tsurugi, Mount Tsurugi Dake mm-hmm. is a major peak. And then if you go down from Tateyama area, there's an area called Yarigatake and Hotaka Dake. That's pretty famous and popular peak, I guess. Now, if I'm not mistaken, Hotaka... Hotaka Dake is the third tallest mountain in Japan. Yeah, right. Is that correct? Yeah. And this Yari is also one of the tallest. Yeah, one of the tallest, but I forget. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I was hoping, yeah. Sorry about I was that. Hoping, no, that's okay. I was hoping you'd jump in because so, so, so have I. But the second tallest mountain in Japan is Kita. Kita Dake, which is in Southern Alps. Southern Alps. Alps. Okay. And so it's an, in the North Alps, even though, as we mentioned, Fuji is the highest mountain in Japan at 3,776 meters. Correct. Yeah, um, but actually, most of the other highest mountains are in the north, or yeah, north Alps. So, as you mentioned earlier, the uh, Japanese hiking season begins in July yeah. and runs until when, roughly? Roughly mid October, I guess. But still, some of the mountain huts is opening until like the mid November to the end of November. But the thing you have to be careful. Uh, if you want to go around that time, there is a chance to get snow higher up on the mountain. This is in o- around October, November. October, November. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes from the end of September. Yeah. Yeah, I've experienced it. So what do you, when do you recommend as the best time to go into the mountains in Japan? I mean, if you want to go the mountains like Alps and Mount Fuji, the best time is mid-July to mid-September. If you just want to go like any mountains for <laughs> refresh yourself, you can go from spring to autumn season. If you choose uh, lower mountains, yeah. even in Nagano City, there are a lot of mountains. Yeah. That's one nice thing about Japan, actually, uh, is something which I think a lot of international visitors aren't really aware of. It's not just that Japan has all these very high mountains. Japan is actually really blessed with lots of really fantastic national parks. Yeah, correct. And the good thing about them, I think, coming from Australia, is they're very easy to access, Mm -hmm. most of them. Unlike the national parks in Australia, where some of them are amazing, but it might take you five or six hours, ten hours to get there. (laughs) Uh, Here in Japan, you can typically get on a train or a bus it's going to get you to a very convenient point and then you can start your hiking or whatever, however else you choose to go into the national park. Yeah. It's a nice way to do it. Obviously, summer is the height of the hiking season in Japan. Yeah. But Japanese summers, the conditions are also can be quite challenging. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. With a lot of heat and humidity. How would you describe that? In terms of if someone's looking to come and go hiking in the summer, uh-huh. what kind of weather conditions should they be prepared for? So if you go Alps, you need, even in summer, you need uh, warm layers and make sure you get rain gears, like rain jacket and pants. The thing that you have to concern is, um, another thing is typhoon. Mm. Yes, typhoon, we have typhoon se- season in Japan. So 
yeah, you have to be aware of that. And so someone's going to, going to see you uh, guiding at Fuji again. Right. Talk to me about that. How many seasons have you done at Fuji and exactly what is the work that, you, that you'll be doing there? I've already done two seasons, mm-hmm. actually. Because mm-hmm. my first season was right before COVID and then I did uh, last year. That was, a, that was my second season. I think this year a lot of foreigners comes back. Yeah, we take guests from Tokyo, go uh, up to fifth station Mm -hmm. by bus. Mm -hmm. And there's a mountain hut on the fifth station. We get ready there. So Moto, anyone who's interested in climbing Fuji, how many official trails are are there up the mountain? Uh, there's, uh, There's four trails on Fuji. And one of the major trail is... Uh, Yoshida Trail. The trail we use is Subashiri Trail, mm-hmm. which facing eastern side of Fuji. So Yoshida, if I'm not mistaken, is the most popular trail up and down. Yes, yes. So why do you choose to take your guests on a different trail? Less busy. Yeah. Because uh, Yoshida Trail is, is pretty busy up there. I don't know why they choose Yoshida Trail, to mm-hmm. be honest, because the uh, in terms of distance, Yoshida is a bit longer than the others. Yeah, the longest one is the other one, a Gotemba Trail. It's obviously hard because mm. the Gotemba Trail is used for uh, training of army, Japanese army. Ah. There's an <laughs> army base, yeah, at the bottom oh, of is there? Yeah, right. Fuji. Mm. And then the last one is Fujinomiya. This, this one is the shortest trail. But I think the reason why Yoshida is popular is the numbers of mountain hut. And then, ah, okay. Yeah. The most facilities up there to yeah. handle. Because when I, I climbed Fuji once, years ago, uh, we went up the Yoshida Trail. Right. And that was my experience because it was exceptionally busy. Uh-huh. And so the whole, we climbed at night. Yeah. <laughs> and the whole, my whole uh, hike up and down, up the mountain, sorry, I was looking at someone else's uh-huh. backpack in front of me. Uh-huh. And somebody would have been looking at mine. <laughs> and it was just a trail of hundreds of people. It's too busy. It's too busy, right? Yeah. And so I, I didn't find it as, a re- as rewarding as I'd hoped. Okay. So you guys take your guests up a, a different trail. And when you're guiding, uh-huh. how, what size groups are you taking up there? Um, if it's big, like about 30 mm. people at a time. And then we have like six or five or six guys yep. yeah, together. And are you getting a real mix of nationalities that you're guiding up to? Yeah, yeah, American, Australian, uh, yeah, European. Yep. Yeah, but there's no Japanese, I guess. Oh, cool. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How would you describe that hike going up Fuji? Is it kind of, again, is it suitable to anyone who's reasonably fit or is it a challenging hike? Um, yeah, if you're reasonably fit. Um, so that trail itself is pretty easy it's well main, maintained what i'm talking about is the weather condition mm. and also you have to think about the altitude yes yeah. if you go faster yeah the most of the people struggling with the altitude sickness like yep. uh, you will get headache yeah. nausea uh, feels like vomiting so that actually, yeah, that was my experience. It yeah. really surprised me that I think from around three thousand meters, I really start to feel, felt, I, I started to feel the effects. Yeah, uh, and you know, I could get up there in the end, no problem. But yeah. I think it catches a lot of people out because it's a high mountain, right? Right, right. And if anyone's interested in booking with you while you're at Fuji, uh-huh. how would they go about doing that? How do they contact you? And um, so I'm working for one of the company called Fuji Mountain Guys. Mm. Uh, yeah, you can contact them. Okay. Yeah, Fuji Mountain Guys. So what I'd like to do is take a break now, Moto, and when we come back in part two, talk more about your story and how you came to become a mountain guide and be living this lifestyle. Welcome back. So I'm speaking with Hayashi Motohiro, uh, or better known as Moto the Mountain Guide, about his work here as a professional mountain guide in Japan. So Moto, 
I'd like to talk more about your story and how you got into this lifestyle. Originally, you're from Saitama, is that correct? Yeah, Saitama, next to Tokyo. Next to Tokyo. So Saitama is a big city, right? Yeah, yeah. I guess so. Yeah, so if, if you've not been to Japan before, if you're going from Tokyo to Saitama, you wouldn't even notice that you've left Tokyo because there's, there's no transition. It's just straight into another city. Right. So how do you go from Saitama to leading the life that you now are? Is it something that you always wanted? Did you always plan for this lifestyle? So it was, um, I started hiking when I was 23 years old, I guess, mm. right before my graduation of university. Mm-hmm. So until then, I, I like sports, like basketball. I've, I've been playing basketball for mm. 10 years-ish, I guess. And then after that, I went to, after high school, I went to university to learn English. I wanted to yeah, become English speaker. Because mm-hmm. yeah. uh, in, in high school, um, there was a good English teacher. Mm. I think I, I got a um, big inf- influence from him. Right. Yeah. And then uh, after in the university, um, I took a year leave uh, to Australia mm-hmm. to improve my English. But I, I hadn't started hiking yet around that time. Even at that age. So how old were you at this time? Uh, 20. 20. 20. Okay. So this is before university. Yeah. After Australia, back in university, I felt boring <laughs> <laughs> in campus life. Yeah. Uh, so I had a chance to go to Nepal for environmental work. And then we stayed at a village for two years doing some environmental activity. We had a chance to hike up from that village to one up. That was a good experience. I think the experience changed my life. You said you were there for two years. Sorry, two weeks. Uh, two weeks. Two weeks, sorry. And so while you were there, you started your kind of your first hiking experience. Yeah, the first day we hiked up. And then once we get there, uh, we had a party, dancing, (laughs) singing, (laughs) drinking, Uh and then we went to bed. And then the next morning, I still remember Mm. um, one of the locals woke us up and then, uh, look at the mountain. That is Manasu, one of the highest mountain in the world. Yeah, that view was gorgeous. Yeah. And then since then, I... (laughs) Felt like I, uh, I wanted to go into the mountain. So you feel like something with that experience, something in you changed, and you, from that point on, yeah, I, I you, it, yeah, definitely, I think so. So then I assume that you returned to Japan, uh-huh. and what was the next step for you? Um, back in Japan, uh, to be honest, I didn't know where to start, how to start, like to go mountain. I, I thought I need a, a lot of gear mm. to go. On the mountain, <laughs> but you know, it costs too much, mm. maybe. So I was researching how I can go to the mountain. Back then, I think I should have talked to someone who's doing <laughs> <laughs> mountaineering hiking, but I didn't do that. And I, oh, really? You didn't look for any advice at all? Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, for a reason, I found the information of trail running, running on the mountain. And uh, it was a race in Togakushi. Which is very nearby where we are now. Yeah. We're literally 30 minutes. 30 drive minutes, yeah. And 25k running on the mountain. Ah, oh, that sounds cool. You need rain jacket, water, backpack, shoes. That's it. Oh. Is that, is that actually running on Togakushi Mountain or is it? No. no um, around that area. Right. Yeah, you're not going to go to the peak. Yeah, because Togakushi's got a reputation as quite a dangerous mountain. Yeah, it's quite rocky. Yeah. So yeah. it's not good for running <laughs> at all. <laughs> the only advice, because obviously Togakushi, as I mentioned, is very, very nearby where we are today. Huh. Uh, we, we go up there regularly. <clears throat> and the only advice I've had from locals up there is don't go up that mountain without somebody who knows what they're doing. Yeah, so I, I was surprised. I thought, well, really, they're running out there. <laughs> so. the running around that area. <laughs> beautiful yeah. mountain. Yeah, beautiful mountain. Mm. So I enjoyed that race and then I did that. It was rainy. I couldn't see any mountains at all. 
I was、uh, running behind of the、um, mid aged guy. <laughs> I thought I could、um, beat him, but I couldn't. Oh, really? I, <laughs> <laughs> I finished it.、Um, I thought it was fun.、Mm. Somehow I felt like I want to do it more and more. Yeah. Trail running now in Japan is getting very popular. Yeah. When you first started trail running, maybe not as popular back then? Not popular. There was no word like trail running. Right. So, as you took up that hobby of trail running, you're still quite young at that time. Yeah. What was, again, the next step in terms of this journey to get to where you are today? I kept joining the race,、uh, like longer distance.、Mm. After the graduation of university, I went to Kyoto and、mm. staying, working at a guest house. In a day off,、uh, I was running, running, running. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, that was a good time.、Um, but at some point,、um, I just felt a bit bored、mm. running in <laughs> winter, even in winter. Right. So I just wanted to another activity、mm. that I can feel mm. winter. Mm. Mm. <laughs> so then I. Moved to Hakuba in winter season.、Mm-hmm. Um, at first time, I was working at accommodation. I practiced skiing. But、uh, I, I had nobody to teach me how to ski. You couldn't ski at this point? Nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> That was first season. <laughs> at the end of the first season, the job from the accommodation finished、mm. earlier than I thought.、Mm. But there's still. A lot of snow on the mountain and the ski field. So I didn't want to leave Hakuba. I was looking for some job and then I found one of the ski patrol. I would think a essential part of working as ski patrol is that you know how to ski. <laughs> But no. No. <laughs> no. So how did that happen? How, did, how do you get a job as ski patrol when you can't ski? You just don't mention it at the interview? <laughs> <laughs> no.、Um, So, in the interview, I clearly said I can't ski, <laughs> but I wanted to become a good skier. At that time, my goal was to go backcountry skiing. The boss at that time、um, he said, Okay, we need a help from you、mm. in terms of English. Because、uh, at that time,、uh, back in 2014 or 15, a lot of Australians and Americans come to Hakuba, they, they do not have an English speaker、right. at all. Yeah. So, yeah, they need us, they need me. And then, how did you go into obviously from that? So, we talked about the trail running, working the ski patrol in Hakuba, to actually now as a qualified professional mountain guide. How did that come about? I just kept going mountain.、Mm-hmm. Then, up my Last 20s, I went to New Zealand. Before I go to New Zealand, I, I already applied、uh, to one of the guiding jobs in New Zealand. And I think that experience changed me. A lot of guests,、uh, they are international. It's kind of mixing Japanese and other, the people from the other country. And then international guests、uh, told me, like, Japan is. They, they've already visited Japan. They said, Japan is a good country. I want to go back there. Those questions led me to do this guiding job, I guess. Yeah. I wanted to, I want to share the beauty of、uh, Japan. Interesting point you make there. Before I first came to Japan, basically what I knew about Japan was big cities、uh-huh. Tokyo, Osaka. I never really heard that Japan is such a beautiful country. And I certainly didn't know it was such a mountainous country.、Mm. And so, it's, it's one of the reasons for me starting this podcast is also to get that message out.、Um, obviously, the region that we're in now, the snow country,、mm-hmm. people obviously have some concept that there are mountains and snow here by the name. But most people look at this region as a winter destination.、Mm-hmm. And I think there's actually as much to do, I think actually more to do in these areas in spring, summer, and autumn because、mm. the mountains. Don't get any smaller. They're just as big as they are in winter.、Yeah. And there's all this fantastic hiking and climbing and all these other things that you can do while you're here.、Mm. But a question I had for you, Moto, is that you're now 35, yes? Right,、That's、yes. Right?、Yep. Yeah. 
Um, I think I'd say you're pretty non-typical of most Japanese uh-huh. at, at this age yeah. where, you know, a lot of Japanese are going to go into careers and keep working for the same companies for a long period of time. Yeah, salaryman. Every- <laughs> salaryman, yes. Yeah, yeah. And everything we're talking about in terms of your work is very much seasonal. You right. talked about working in the ski resort for winter and now you're going out Tatayama for uh-huh. a brief period and then you'll, you'll be heading to Fuji uh-huh. and the rest of the, the uh, spring and summer and autumn you're available to guide elsewhere. Yeah, It's all very seasonal work, which is somewhat kind of unstable in terms of income. lifestyle and income. Yeah. <laughs> Do you ever, ever have any regrets that you've chosen this lifestyle rather than going down that path of being a salaryman? And- no, I don't think so. Like mm. when I was younger, maybe I had a anxiety. Mm. Like um, I didn't know how my future is gonna be. Mm. Like where, <laughs> where to go? I didn't know where to go. But now uh, I don't regret. I don't look back. What is it about the mountains that makes you want to be there? I just feel calm and. Every time I go up there, um, go up there, come back to my home, I feel like I naturally I wanted to have like gratitude yeah. to the nature. Because in Japan, Japan has a strong kind of, a, a Japan is native religion of Shintoism. Yeah. And in Shintoism, there is a strong focus on nature worship. Right. And amongst those, you have uh, these faith systems called Shugendo. Mm -hmm. Shugendo are are a mix of Shintoism and Buddhism and different things. And typically, they are very strongly focused on nature worship and actually going Mm. into the mountains Mm. as a form of spiritual retreat and testing, Mm. often what they refer to as Yamabushi, these kind of mountain aesthetics, mountain men. Right. Do you find that there is a spiritual aspect to what you do? Yeah, I think so. Any experiences that you've had that you can speak of? Yeah, I don't know if this story is related to like spirituality, mm. but um, uh, one of the experience was um, at that time I and my friends were running like long distance on the mountain without sleep. It's very tough, but we wanna make it. At the second night, I saw green fire <laughs> ball. Ish <laughs> on the mountain, mm. and I didn't talk about that at that time to my friends. But after finish it, my friend saw it too. Yeah, it's called uh, Kitsunebi in Japanese. That is the soul of a dead person. So there's a traditional belief in Japanese culture that human souls are born atop the mountains. And they flow down the rivers to the human world. And upon our death, we eventually return to the top of the mountain. Um, and there's a diff- many, many types of Shintoism, mm. I guess. So, yeah. Any other experiences? This is the one I haven't talked to mm. you. Um, mm. When I was guiding uh, Fuji, mm. uh, when we were going down, uh, we encountered the accident one of the guy from other tours not from us got injured on his knee and then we were helping the rescue there's some noise from the top at that time uh, the weather condition was like uh, misty Mm. um, and couldn't see anything further like 50 meters away but we had a noise and then huge, it turned out huge borders are coming down to us. Mm. But somehow the border went into the tiny valley. We were very <laughs> lucky. Yeah. But yeah, somehow yeah. I believe, I don't know, mountain goes or <laughs> something. Yeah. yeah so I, I certainly have nothing like your experience <laughs> in the mountains. But I have a real interest in talking to people like yourself who do because you're an experienced guy. You know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. But you can only prepare so much. Yeah. When you're in the mountains, you're not in control. No. You're in an element. Never know what's going to happen. You never know. (laughs) You never know what's going to happen. And that's where I think naturally it must have a form of spirituality Mm -hmm. because it takes people outside of the everyday where you kind of relatively feel like life is kind of in control. Mm -hmm. 
maybe that's what makes life feel a bit boring down here because <laughs> you kind of it feels controlled right, right. But where you go is as i said i'm sure you're not someone to, to take risks as yeah. a guide but you, know, you, you can't account for everything that can happen yeah and there must be something i assume there's something that appeals about that uh, to you that it's a different different world a different domain yeah yeah i think uh you never know until you get there is kind of one of the attractions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and also, Moto, I know this year that you're setting up a um, yourself as an independent guide. Yes. And you're in the process of putting up, setting up your website. Yes. Can you talk to me about that? If anyone wanted to contact you, how do they get in touch with you for guiding? Uh, if you can search uh, mmguide.net. That's my website, and then there's a contact page. You can get in touch with me. I wanted to get MMG or Moto Mountain Guide, but it's already used. So someone's already grabbed it. <laughs> yeah. MMGuide.net. I like the name though, like Moto the Mountain Mountain Guide. Very easy to remember. Yeah, it's easy. And in terms of your independent guiding, which areas of Japan? Are you available to, to guide in? I want to cover especially <laughs> Nagano area. Mm-hmm. Um, as we mentioned earlier, Northern Alps. And do you have some recommended hikes that you, you, you suggest to people who are maybe coming from overseas that are suitable maybe for an overnight hike? On the North Northern Alps, there's many mountain huts over there. Mm-hmm. Um, if you are fit enough, Hotaka or Yari Gatake is... Uh, Good for them. And are you available for longer hikes? If somebody wanted to hire you for you know multiple days, is that something that you can that you can cover? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the process of booking you? Like, if someone gets in contact, how do you make an assessment of their level and what what hikes that they can do? I ask, um, what's your fitness level? Like, what's mm. your experience of hiking? Yep. And then, yeah, um, I'm setting up like it should be all in form from me and then if you have any worry uh, just contact me well Moto I think uh, it's a good place to wrap up the interview uh-huh. uh, I hope you've enjoyed today thank you so much for giving me thank, your time thank you thank you I know you're in your last days down here before you head to Tatayama right that's happening at the end of next week is that correct yeah correct yeah so all the best with that make sure you stay safe don't do anything too, <laughs> too adventurous with the back country and I hope that when you come back down before you head off to Fuji I can uh, catch up with you before you, you disappear yeah. for the summer. Yeah, let's go up there. Uh, yeah, let's do it, mate. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time, Otto. And all yeah, the best with the, with, the, with the new website and the and guiding for yourself. All right. Thank you. Cheers, mate. That's it for today's episode. I'd like to say another very big thank you to Motto for speaking with me. He really is a lovely guy to spend time with, and I recommend him to anyone looking to book a guide for a mountain tour while in this region of Japan. You can contact him through his personal website, www.mmguide.net, in relation to hiking in the North Alps and other mountains of Nagano. Or if you're interested in him guiding you at Fuji, contact him through the company he works for there, www.fujimountainguides.com. Make sure to check out the show notes for today's episode for a link to his Instagram, and links to other destinations we touched on, including Hakaba Iwatake and the Tatayama Kurobe Alpine Route. Thank you to everyone who is listening. Just a reminder that the podcast website has changed to www.snowcountrystories.com and you can find us on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook by searching Snow Country Stories Japan. Make sure to subscribe to, rate, review and share the podcast. Playing out the show today, as always, is the local Taiko group, Isna Gongen Daiko. And just a reminder that in episode three of the podcast, I interviewed Komatsu Harana, the composer of this piece and performer with the group. So if you missed that episode, make sure to go back and listen. I'll be back in a couple of weeks' time with the next episode. Until then, it's bye for now. <laughs>